Hi guys and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast. Before we get into today's podcast, I'd just like to give a big shout out to our current patrons. And if you'd like to join these names in the brand new Blues Focus Hall of Fame, uh, you can join our Patreon page for just £1 a month. So I think that's uh, it's a bargain if you ask me. Uh, but, you know, perks included uh, will be monthly giveaways and early access to guest pods. The link will be in the description anyway for our uh, Patreon packages and um, you can see what takes your fancy there. But that's enough from me. Let's get straight into today's Blues Focus podcast. Thank you for joining us as always. Vision is well aware of Rangers ability from that range. It's one thing knowing what he's going to do. It is a completely different matter trying to stop him. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Blues Focus podcast with me, your host, John Graham. Once again, many thanks for taking the time to download this pod or indeed if you're watching it on YouTube channel, uh, Blues Focus, please subscribe and you'll never miss a YouTube uh, broadcast or a podcast again. And online, please go to bluesfocuspod.co.uk, subscribe uh, and, and whenever you can, please rate our our content, it does help a great deal. So, um, as ever, I've got Tom Oxlam with me. How are you, Tom? Good, thank you, mate. Sounds. And uh, as we have done over recent weeks, we've got yet another legend of the club. Um, and, it, and he is in the in the truest nature, a legend of the club. Um, absolute no-holds-barred defender. Um, ap- superb from, from dead balls, free kicks. Scored lots of goals over his sort of 226 appearances for the club. Uh, he scored 25 goals uh, and, yeah, was at the club for nine years. So uh, 28. <laughs> is it 28? Okay. If, you include, if you include cup competitions as well, I think. OK, there you oh. go. Then. And uh, so, yeah, um, welcome, Martin Granger. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm all good. Thank- thanks for having us, gents. No problem at all. Support for today's Blues Focus podcast is brought to you by none other than Manscaped. Manscaped specialised in all your below-the-waist grooming needs. They want, they've only just recently landed in the UK, so you could be first one of the first men in the country to even try out their products. So uh, get looking at them now. They're definitely big in other countries, and they finally dropped in the UK. I think many people can say, you know, we've gone years without using the right tools for the job. So uh, it's about time we started using the right tools for the job to avoid accidents. I'm sure we've all had uncomfortable moments um, in situations like that that we'd rather not share. But to avoid those moments, why not invest in specialised precision tools to get the job done correctly? They've recently launched the Lawnmower 3.0, which I actually have um, here with me right now to show you. There you go. There it is in action. Got a little torch. I think that the torch is an interesting feature. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that on uh, an electrical trimmer before. So, um, no, it's, it's definitely... Um, definitely different and you know you, you get a docking station with it and stuff and um plenty of little fittings you can have on the top of the trimmer it's it's charged last up to like 90 minutes uh so you know <laughs> if you uh if you're a bit bored in a blues game then go go shave your uh, lower regions for the full 90 minutes i mean we are that bad so it wouldn't surprise me if somebody did um it's waterproof so um if you wanted to take it in the shower that's not a problem it's not gonna blow up on you or fail or anything uh, so you're covered there they've also upgraded to a 7000 rpm motor with a quiet stroke technology like i mentioned earlier you know smooth quiet makes things a lot easier it's not it's not just for below the waist grooming really it can be for body grooming in general but you know i that's i feel like that as a whole definitely sells itself as a unique trimmer so I'd, I'd highly recommend it, having tried it myself. So it's it's definitely worth, worth a go anyway. And, you know, if you buy one of their packages, you get plenty of other little gifts, such as this wash bag, um, some uh, some toner and some deodorant and whatnot, and um, the docking station, obviously. I mean, they even do T-shirts in boxes and stuff like that. If you're really interested in the fashion side of things, to be fair, their clothes are quite comfy, having uh, also tried them myself. Um, but no, have, having seen all that, if you are interested, then to get 20% off plus free shipping, use the code BLUESFOCUS20 at manscaped.com. And there you are, sorted. You can uh, 
have a nice little trim wherever that may be but obviously it is specialized in certain areas but you know whatever suits you give it a go so uh, just to recap there that's 20 percent off plus free shipping using the code blues focus 20 so let's uh let's get into the podcast so um yeah, I guess to kick it off, mate, how did it all begin for you? Football, was it your sort of your, your passion? Was it something you always wanted to do or how did you get into it? Well, it's just uh, as a kid, it was, that was all, all you got. Was it? it was a ball and a bike back then. Yeah. Um, it was either ride your bike and play, well, ride your bike and go and play football. Just playing out on the streets with your mates and then school teams, district, counties, and it just progressed from there. I didn't actually, back then, didn't actually think you would have master anything. Really? You know, back back in the eighties, yeah, you just just played as a hobby, didn't you? So, so when when you got the sort of nod, obviously your you, you first sort of you you sort of deal uh, with Colchester. Were, were other teams knocking around at the time? Were you scouted as a, as a lad? Well, I was I was at Leighton Orient as a 13, 14 year old, um, and my school at the time they weren't really into you going to play for a, a football club on a Saturday because of yeah. your school team. So to play at Leighton Orient, they made me uh, play for the cricket team, basketball team, in, uh, athletics, everything. So in the end, I was doing everything every day. I'd, wait, I'd give up. Just said to me, Dad, I don't want to do it no more. And then um, there was a school teacher uh, from a, a rival school of ours, um, and he was a scout for Colchester United. Okay. And we used to play against the school, and he said, look, come down to Colchester and do a bit of training and a few games and that, and it just progressed from there, really. And just sort of started out again. And my dad told the school, look, he's not doing the cricket. He's not doing the basketball. He's not... Because I, I protested on the... Because uh, I used to do, have to do the cross-country. I walked and come last. <laughs> <laughs> so I just come in last, but they made me do it. Um, and then he went up and sorted it out the school, and then we just... Uh, I got released to go and play on a Saturday. And it just went from there, really. Have you always always a defender, or were you, were you playing any other positions, or was that just your, your sort of bread and butter from the from the outset? No, I was a winger. Okay. Um, when I first started, yeah, didn't didn't have a trick in me, but I could. I was, I was a runner, weren't very quick, but I could just boom it, as they say. <laughs> and I scored. <laughs> I used to score lots of goals from all over the place. And um, as I sort of you come against better players, I sort of started going backwards the, the, the school teacher said how about playing left back and then uh that was it went back to left back and stayed there ever since but to be fair I like I did at Birmingham I played in numerous positions so yeah which I quite enjoyed so so when when you sort of initially sort of did the deal with with Colchester you made your debut as a as a teenager what do you remember from those those early years did you sort of take to it easily or how did you find it um I mean I, I was I struggled with weight when I was younger um, when I when I first started, because there was one quote in one of the papers, Francis Ponder, I remember him saying, "The chunky left back." <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> so, nice. so I sort of not not struggled with Billy, but I, I carried a little bit of excess. And um, I remember we played Torquay, we lost three 0 at home on my debut, and I got absolutely roasted for ninety minutes. Oh no! Uh, yeah, it was just one of them. But you you remember those things, and um, I think after I started playing a few games, I sort of dipped in and out. Then. The pre-season after that, I sort of I shed about a stone and a half. Wow! Uh, over pre-season, and then um, when I went back, funny enough, I didn't, I wasn't playing. And then David Webb took me out the reserves from Colchester, took me down to Brentford, had a few trial games, and that was it. Went on from there. Okay, so and 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 obviously moving on to Brentford, sort of really successful over a hundred appearances. What what was did it sort of click for you then? Did you really find your groove when you were at Brentford? Did you feel at home there? Yeah, but it took me a little bit to to adapt because Brentford, although they used to get the ball forward early, they used to play a bit of football. But when we was at Colchester, it was out from if you got it from the goalkeeper, you just went long. Yeah. So we we played in the first. We had a friendly at home against Barnet, and every time I got it off the keeper, I just went whack, and everyone was going, "What are you doing?" <laughs> just kept going wallop. I thought, "What? This is all, this is how, this is the coaching we had. We just got eight feet, hit the front, but." It, that then when, once I got in, you, you start playing a different type of football. Um, yeah. Really, really enjoyed my time. I didn't actually want to leave. Um, I was told I had to go because they were struggling for finances. Okay. Um, I think we played Cardiff in a midweek game, and the next day we, I think it was a Thursday, we was in. The manager said, "Look, I've got to sell you." 
Wow. Um, we're struggling for money. You've got to go. And I was like, all right, where am I going? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> oh, Birmingham City have come in for you. So I went and said, well, okay. so I went home and spoke to my dad. And he said, massive club, sleeping giant. You've got to go. So that was it o- on your bike. So, so when you um, when you first got to Blues, what what was how how was it different? Just the setup at, at Brentford com- in compa- in comparison to Birmingham, was it sort of massive difference? Everything was just bigger on a bigger scale. Yeah, um, I, mean, I think Brentford at the time, when, the few years I was there, they were struggling. I mean, cultures were always struggling for money. Brentford at the time was struggling for money, not like now. Now they're flying. Yeah, um, and it was just. It was just a bigger scale, obviously, bigger stadium, bigger crowds, bigger squad, uh, bigger players. Yeah. So you just got you just got to adapt to that, uh, adapt to that, and you you do feel like the new kid at the school. You know, yeah. I think I think the first person I'm where I went and done a gym session with Neil the physio and the Mad Macam and Tatey and Big oh, Kev. No. And Tatey was calling me a soft southern shandy drinking, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> he, was. he was giving me that. He was giving me that the whole session. Well, yeah, funnily enough, he, he mentioned you a few times. We we caught up with him um, last week, um, and, and yeah, yeah, certainly a character. I think he's probably ah. the best way to put. Great bloke, typical, oh, yeah. typical blues. Great, great stuff. Oh, he was so, mad. He was mad, but he was a great mad. He yeah. was a mad that you wanted in your team. Yeah, I, I, I think we, we gathered that. It was just, yeah. just great, great <laughs> fun. And, and talking about, I guess, you know, good blokes and, and, and people that warm to the to the supporters, you, you definitely did that pretty much from the get-go. So did you feel that? Did you feel that sort of bond with the, with the fans? Initially, when I first come, no, because I had a bit... I think the first few weeks or months, I'd give a penalty away. <laughs> I got sent off. I scored no goal and I remember I was sub away at Swindon and I got up to warm up and someone shouted out from our crowd, Granger, sit effing down, don't want you coming on. <laughs> so I thought, but that, from, from then I thanked that man because I thought, right, I'll prove you wrong. Yeah. yeah. And then turned it round and uh, it was just the way I played. I played like that. I'm not when I was a winger, I didn't used to tackle anyone, but then as soon as you went further back, yeah, you see the game in front of you. It's just just the way I played. Yeah, you know, and I, 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 people appreciate that. Yeah, I, I absolutely, hundred percent. And and I think you know, certainly from from my point of view, that um, or, always knew that it was you know it's cliche, mm-hmm. but always going to be hundred percent. Always going if the ball's there to win it. And to be fair, sometimes if it isn't, you'd get something. That that's for sure. Um, well, the ball goes past a player, don't and vice versa, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that's what I was always taught. So when so when you came into Blues, I mean we'd just gone through like a a huge change behind the scenes, you know, newish owners. Um, mm. Obviously, Trevor Francis came in, and and the side really started to progress. What what do you remember about those first couple of seasons? Because you know it was really sort of like housey and days for Blues for a bit there. You know, we had a, a bloody good side, and you were you know instrumental in it. So what, what do you remember about those first couple of seasons? Well, firstly, for me, was winning. Trevor over because he he was signing left back after left back after left back. Uh, yeah. I mean Simon Charlton, Simon Marsh, Tommy Williams, uh, Gary Ablett, God bless him, uh, David Burrows, and I just thought, and then he tried John O'Dea, and I just thought well, I, I just had to try and win him over first. I remember him. <laughs> I've done some. I give a penalty, another penalty away, and I remember <laughs> one of the lads. One of the lads said to me, he said on the uh, on the bench, look at our pup player. <laughs> 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 so it, it was it was it was winning him over them but then signing players you're thinking wow well, I'm playing alongside him now um and one of the the best players for me as a fullback playing the ball was Paul Fur he didn't get Paul Furlong didn't get the credit he deserved really yeah um he was an unbelievable striker to play <laughs> for play with and I think he, I think his record was one in two that he scored um something around that sort of but he had a lot of niggly injuries because he was driving up the M1 every day. That's why. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, and I think with 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 Paul Furlong and probably <clears throat> maybe not so much at Blues, but certainly over his career, you know, players like Emil Heskey, if they're in the if they're playing now, they'd be lauded because you know it's a bit like Firmino at Liverpool. Apparently, an ama- yeah. amazing player, but never scores any goals really. But yeah, I'd agree. Furlong was a, a an inspirational player for the team. Oh, he was. I mean, I remember his first day when he come in, and we done. 
I think it was attack versus defence, and he was a handful. Oh, his elbows, his knees, and strength. He was better. Than, he was a better player than people give him credit for. Yes. So, so do, what do you remember about? Um, obviously, we seem to be every single season getting into the playoffs. How how was that for you over those few seasons? And and did any one stick out more than another as far as? You know, being disappointed where you felt, you know, we're we're on track here. We get we're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, I had a failed attempt with the year that um, Birmingham beat us by a point. I think Brentford. Yeah. Uh, it was eighty six to eighty five points, I believe. Um, so I missed out there. I mean, uh, Preston. Yeah. Um, was a bit of a farce with the penalties. They had to do it the other end because the police said so. Yeah. Um, but the real hurtful one. Watford, I thought we should have won if it wasn't for the goalkeeper. For them, he had an outstanding day. But Barnsley, we fancied Barnsley. Yeah. That was a, that was the most disappointing one of all because we, out of all of them, we thought, yeah, Barnsley, we've got this. You know, maybe we was a little bit complacent in the way we thought. Um, but to get turned over 4-0 at home, it's just game over. You've got no chance. You ain't going to go to Barnsley and score five. No. How do you kind of cope with those failures and look to kick on and turn it around? Uh, because you've always got another, you've always got another chance, another opportunity. Either if if, if you're during the season, you have got your next game. If you've just missed out, you think right, how can we add to go that one step further? Um, so I was one of them. I was really disappointed at the time, but I'd never take it outside the ground or the changing room. Never take yeah. it. Home. Um, you keep that at work, and then you just got to work at it. Um, and luckily enough, we improved, 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 and we got there in the end. Yeah, and and, and I, th- I suppose just before we did that, the uh, obviously the the cup final against Liverpool was, you know, just just for, for, from a you know long suffering Blues fans, we you know sort of had to pinch ourselves. What what do you remember about that particular you know the day and the build up and you know thoughts of the actual game you know itself? How, how do you think we, we 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 sort of stood up against them? Yeah, I mean, taking away the penalties, we we should have had. Another penalty. Yeah, I think it was in the first period of extra time on it, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and I think David Ellery bottled it personally because we was a championship side. Um, I thought we were worthy to win it in ninety minutes. Thought we were a better side. Yeah. Um, but it was just the day in the build up was just it's just a dream to play in a major cup final, and I was lucky enough to do it twice. Well, three times actually, because I beat Villa in the Birmingham Senior Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's the best one. Yeah. Well, well, Barry Fry, he, um, he made four or five of us play because he wanted to win. Brilliant. So, that's yeah. Brilliant. But um, no, just the build up and everything and the atmosphere. And but it's, you just feel like you let people down at the end when you miss the penalty, you know? You, it's just one of them. You've got your, your sons in the crowd and your mum, your dad. And, misses and you think oh you pilchered you know what I mean well I mean you, you I suppose it was what well, I know obviously you were at first so did you put yourself in that did 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 Trev do that no, did you, I, no I just said I'll, I'll go I'll, I'll go first I'll yeah. take it every day of the week but if you I think I've only seen it once uh watched it once back and he's at least two yards off his line before he makes his move to left because obviously as I've come up to the ball I know where I'm going I'm not looking at him I'm going across him and he's obviously read me and he's yeah. off two yards. So now you would, you'd be taking it again. Yeah. I probably would have missed it the second time in the world, though, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> we, it, fully, we had um, Colin Doyle on uh, a couple of weeks ago yeah. and he was saying that, you know, because he, he's still playing and he, and he said penalties. Is he? Who's yeah. he playing for now? Bill Marnock. Bill Marnock, yeah. Oh, is he? I thought he stopped. No. I thought Doyle, the big lurch, he's massive, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he, he, he was good value, but he was saying now it's basically impossible. The impossible, impossible yeah. Penalties. Yeah, but I mean, my boy's a goalkeeper. Um, and in the cut, he played in the FA Cup, uh, in the preliminary rounds, he saved three out of four. Wow. Yeah, I've seen yeah. I've seen your son play live for Orient because my dad's a big Leighton Orient fan, so uh, yeah, yeah, seen yeah, him play yeah. a few times. Is it um, is it Dulwich? Is it Dali, Dali at the minute? Yeah, that's yeah. it. But, yeah, hopefully, he'll, uh, once it all gets back on track, he's been playing really well to be fair to him. That's good. Um, yeah, so hopefully you'll uh, get a chance to get back up into full time football. So, so just obviously after the, I guess, disappointment of the cup final and yeah, 
it's all the end of Trev. Were, were you? What, what, how did? How were you? Did you think he'd probably taken us as far as we could go? Did you think it needed a freshening up? Well, I still think they could have given another another season or two, um, added a few more, uh, because basically, I mean, Brucey got us up really with a Trevor side. Yeah, with with a with a few additions, but. I think Trevor was unlucky to lose his job. He probably don't know the ins and outs really of you hear rumours that they fell out between himself and the board. But it's a shame really because the guy should should still be involved with the football club some in some capacity. Yeah, so I think we, we without a, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So so when when we did finally make that that sort of jump, how did you? I know you had quite a few injuries when we got into the Prem, but how did you find it when, when, when you sort of got in there? Was it what you expected or? Uh, it was harder than I expected in the way of, I mean, I was probably, I would say was in the top five fittest at the football club. Yeah. It was never quick, but I could close people down over five, 10 yards, not a problem. But if I had to race you over hundred yards, you're going to beat me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I found that, we played Arsenal away first game of the season and I was dead on my feet after 70 minutes. Gone. Because you, you, you're constantly... I don't get me wrong, we had some we had some good players, but we were, at the time, top championship players. Yeah. Now you're playing against the elite of the elite. I remember, I think Percy saved about six, six or seven off the line that day. If it weren't for him, we would have lost 10-0. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, we come in and um, Brucey went, how'd you find that? And I went, I hated it. I hated it. I just hated, you're just chasing the ball. So, so obviously, you, you sort of had your chat with with, with Brucey, and and sort of yeah. you said they quite difficult, quite quite they found hard, quite hard in the prem. So, so after yeah. that, did it get easier? Did did you sort of find your feet yeah. a little bit more? Yeah, I think the, the team just grows in confidence um, and believing that you you can play at that level. Uh, that, see, that's that's a bit one of the biggest bugbears of mine is. Yes, we wanted to get the Premier League. Yes, I played in every league from Beezer Owens, old full third, second, first, and then Premiership. Was I good enough to play a whole season? That's what I know people say, yeah, you was good enough, you could do that, but I don't actually know. That's what that's the thing that hurt me the most is yeah. we get there and then my boat sunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, just... and what 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 was the conversation around that? Did we sort of pull to one side or Obviously, you had injuries as well, but how, what, what, how was it handled? Well, in what way do you mean? Just because obviously, when, when you sort of we went into the prem, and yeah. obviously, big, big, you know, lots of signings of the people coming in, and you know, you yeah. used to play in probably forty games a season to to probably not as many. Yeah, well, uh, well, I, I mean, Bruce, you know, I wasn't particularly happy because the season before, um, Graham Soon is coming for me from uh, Blackburn. Okay. Um, they offered a, certain, a substantial amount of money. I think it was two and two million plus five hundred if they stayed in the Premier League. Right. Um, which I would have been on a huge salary um, yeah. that year. They, I think, they won the Carling Cup or the yeah. Worthington Cup, whatever it is, and they, uh, I think, they got into obviously got into Europe yeah. and they stayed in the Premier League. Um, and I said, look, we was in the Championship at the time, so I said, I'd like Trevor said, look, he wanted. I think it was Christian Paulson uh, yeah. at the time. Um, but the club wanted four and a half million pounds and Blackburn didn't want to go to that amount. Um, and Brucey knew, obviously, the wranglings and I weren't very happy because I, I, all I wanted was to be brought in line with what our top earners, well, not the top, top earners were earning, but, you know, we get on a level playing field. Fair yeah. wage, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was told to politely F off Come by on. a certain, <laughs> yeah, um, by a certain person who was at the club at the time. And he said, look, after six games, if you're doing well, we'll we'll give you a premiership contract. Yeah. So I said, fair enough. From the sixth game, um, I'd done my tail attendant. Oh. <laughs> it's a perfect timing. So, um, obviously, you, you just said, sort of, looking to get that contract after sort of six games, um, yeah. you, you got you got your injury. So, do, can you just talk us through how, how that all came about, how you got the injury and, and what the fallout after that? Yeah, well, well, it was Middlesbrough away. Um, I took a free kick and just felt stomach uncomfortable in the knee. Um, and then it was causing me pain during the week at training. So we decided to go and have a scan. Um, and then it was agreed that we I'd had to have a thing called a decompression, which they open up 
the knee and lay out a patella tendon and scrape all the rubbish that's on it and then stitch it back together. Um, and then I was out, I can't remember how long I was out for that. Um, and then come back and I think, I think I come back, no, sorry, I've got three bone sleeve infections in three separate occasions. So I had to go back in three times and have it cleaned up. Um, yeah. yeah, and then I think the comeback, I think it's three or four games and then the, the Man United game, the, the free kick I took first, which hit people in the ankles, that's when I actually put the knee popped. Um, right. and, I, and I was limping about and I didn't want to take, the, the goal that I scored, I didn't want to take the free kick, but Brucey was hammering me from the side. Take the free kick. And I was told, I was lucky that um, the rest of it, because it was just hanging on by a thread, the rest didn't snap it for that. And the kneecap would have dislocated and all that. But then half time, I sort of knew that was it. Time to call it a day. Yeah. It was gone. You can see there's a photo I've got somewhere in the house and where I'm planted. You can see the hole in the front of the patella, where the tendon, where it's just popped. Flipping it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't um, want to come off though because I didn't want to look like I was getting substituted again. So I just sort of gripped my teeth and got on with it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I, I think I did the same if I was in your shoes, but it's just one of them. I suppose yeah. on that kind of Man United goal, uh, it's definitely one of the finest Premier League free kicks I've seen. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, I think just obviously you score quite a lot of good goals for Blues. Would you say that was your yeah. favourite? or? Um, I'd say... One of my favourites was Rotherham away um, and the West Ham in the Cup. I think it was Worthington Cup then. I think we lost 3-2 at home. That was probably the best one. Um, but all, all, good, all goals as a fullback is good because you don't get up there very often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you, then you do silly celebrations because you don't know what to do because you don't normally score. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But I actually so- knew the, um, the sports uh, scientists... Uh, for Manchester United, I used to play in the youth team with them at Colchester. And he yeah. said, Roy Carroll said in a dressing room, he was looking where he was throwing it. That's why he sort of half fumbled it before, before he'd actually caught it. Oh, right. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you certainly got more goals than the average fullback. One in 10, I think it is. <clears throat> yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. my miscalculation at the start. Yeah. It's one in 10. So it's not, it's not a bad return. <laughs> no, absolutely no. not. So, so obviously when... Yeah, yeah. Call, it a, call it a day, you know, very much uh, shorten your career. But yeah, what was the impact on you when, when the realisation was that, that it was sort of done? Um, obviously, hard to take. Yeah. Um, but then there's a lot worse for people than me in life in general. Yeah. Um, it was one of them, what would I do in the next chapter? I was offered a job at the club. Um, Brucey showed me a, a package um, what they was going to give me um, uh, a car uh, stay up once a week I have a day off during the week go with the academy on a Saturday wherever they went he put it to the chief executive at the time and what do you reckon she offered me? Next to nothing? 15 grand a year Wow, that's what she that's what she offered me, and she knew full well. I was told she said, "I'm only creating a position to keep people happy, to show that we're we're sticking by her." And that's what she offered me fifteen thousand pounds a year. And she was paying people at the time twenty. I think certain players were on about twenty five, thirty grand a week. Flipping neck. Yeah, and I just went. I will tell you what, you can do with that, Steve. You can shove out your ass. Just out <laughs> of principle. I, in hindsight, maybe I should have took the job to learn, learn your trade, but I just thought, obviously you wasn't going to get X amount, a thousand pounds a week, but taking the mick really. Yeah. So I just said no, and I didn't want to have, I didn't have nothing to do with football after that, because obviously what went on with the testimonial as well, um, all the shenanigans went on with that, getting charged seven grand to use the pitch and all that sort of stuff. Um, it just, just left a bit of appeal. It was sad really, because it just, it didn't end well. We've, with the club, yeah, not the supporters, not the supporters, but with the club. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, I, it's a shame, real shame that. Um, because I know obviously, as fans, you are uh, as considered a legend, and um, for that not to be recognized by the club at the time is is a shame. 
Well, um, I, I mean, she offered me the testimonial and the first thing she said, she said, don't expect you're going to get any help from us. I don't really want to give you a testimonial. Um, I'm just doing it to make sure we're doing things right. So I thought, okay. She goes, she gave me an international fortnight. The te- the, uh, we were second from bottom in the Premier League. And it was, I think it was in, I can't even remember, but it was freezing. It was a, it was a night game. And I mean, not too many people come out to watch it, which is understandable because they're paying money week in, week out to watch a second from bottom in the division. Um, and basically, it was just a shambles from start to finish. Yeah. And, and you know, I did. I, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't really actually get to have a proper. You know, that that sort of hurt as well. And I just didn't really want to do with football after that for a while. Yeah. Um, and that's why people said, "Oh, you should have gone into coaching." But I just enjoyed watching my two boys play. Yeah. You know, yeah. So that was more important to me. And than... I think. Sorry, gone. Yeah, I think, I think there's quite a few, <clears throat> a few players that. I think, I think Percy was, was saying the same thing, you know, never really got the opportunity to say goodbye, say that, say that, say that, well, goodbye, say, you know, so the fans could say thank you. And, Colin Doyle was yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. And, it just, yeah it, it's, it's shit. It's shit. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I won't go into details, but some of the things I used to have injected in me just to just to play and put my career on the line week in, week out. I'm not saying I'm a martyr or this or that or the other, but I just wanted to play. And I was helping the team get to where they were. And basically, I, by those three, I think I just got shit on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I didn't even get a thank you uh, at the end. I, don't get me wrong. I don't want anyone rolling out any carpet. and just say thanks for it. But, thanks for it. But just, just a simple thank you. Yeah, I got a letter from some of the office staff thanking me for my efforts for the nine years I was there. Not, not the three that were in charge. You know, yeah. nothing. And not to one be fair, thing. To be fair, though, those three make the uh, the last few, two or three that we've had make makes them look quite good. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, he's, uh, yeah. It's a testament. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I think pro- probably a, a good sort of moment to to move on to. You know where blues are at the moment. So, well, I know you sort of you, you you try and keep up to a date with blues as much as you can. What are your thoughts on what's happening at St Andrews at the moment? I mean, like I, like I said to you earlier, I, I sort of watch it from a from afar, and I've seen bits and bobs of games, and it just just seems there's no, and you can't blame it on not having no atmosphere because as a footballer, you shouldn't need any atmosphere to play a game of football. Um, don't get me wrong, sometimes it helps you, it gives you a little bit of a lift. But it, it, just watching some of the goals that are conceded, it's just it's just all over the place. It just needs, yeah. looks like it's from the manager to the team, it's just miles apart. And from the players on the pitch, it's just miles apart from each other. It just it just seems no cohesion there whatsoever. Um, no leaders, there's no Martin O'Connor, the Darren Percy's in the team, um, Steve Bruce's. You don't see anyone pulling anyone about, and you know, uh, you just don't. It just seems like they've lost the will to win, which yeah. is sad. I was saying that the other the other day. It feels like Blues have no will to win each game. You know, you don't see any desire, and that's that's the the toughest part because I think as Blues fans, all we've ever asked for win, lose, or draw, so long as we see a hundred percent effort. You haven't got to be the best player ever. You just got to try. No. Exactly. Run harder. And if, if he's a better player, then you run more than him. You yeah. know, put your foot in, put your head in. I mean, I, I was speaking to someone about the other day, the, the Bournemouth goal where you've got seven Blues players and a goalkeeper and one guy gets a header. I guarantee you now, if that was Percy, Jono, Kenny Cunningham, they were headed, headed the ball and the player into the stand. You know, <laughs> you only back you only back off if your goalkeeper's coming. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just things like that. It's just, that's just, schoolboy football you know but what they need to do they need to work on the training ground just have one system and stick to it uh, did you did you ever at any point while you're at blues because i mean you're probably one of the one of the very few that throughout all of your time at blues it was only really okay we a couple of the losses in in, in playoffs but invariably it was always positive they're always good teams yeah. but were there any moments where 
you sort of found yourself in a in a situation where the changing room was starting to question what was the manager was saying or questioning each other? And if so, how did you get out of it? No, not with not with any of the managers we had. Um, I mean, when Barry signed me, um, I think he'd 10 weeks and he'd gone. People were a bit surprised that he'd went then um, because he had all these turnaround of players. But no, the dressing room was pretty solid with the managers that we had all the time I was there. Yeah. Um, but we had characters in the team where if it needed to sort it out in the dressing room, we'd, we'd, we'd sort it out. You know, you, you, you'd be... In, in each other's faces, but you wouldn't hold a grudge to it. Where yeah. now, if you, if you see one of them, I, I can imagine one of them having a go at each other in in a dressing room, it'd be like, I ain't passing to you when I get outside. We, we got the right reaction out of each other. And the, the eight or nine years I was there, I always had dressing rooms like that. Characters that, I mean, Paul Devlin, Jeff Horsfield, John McCarthy's, uh, Martin O'Connor, Barry Orn. They was all all winners. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and some of them have been internationals and they had no egos. Yeah. Uh, we, we had great dressing rooms. No, definitely. <laughs> I think one of the biggest praises is, you know, the team spirit of all the squads you've been in at Blues, yeah. particularly. And we don't, we don't see that now. And obviously with that kind of team spirit and bond, you know, you get behind the scenes, you get a lot of funny stories and whatnot. I mean, yeah. we, had, we had Ian Danter on the other day and he spoke about, um, what you did to Tom Ross's phone with um, when you set the language to Greek. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, is, that's all part of it. I mean, we spend lots of time with these, uh, obviously, reporters and, and Tom and, uh, and you get a personal relationship with them and you can have pranks like this. But nowadays, imagine doing it now. I, yeah. I can see anyone in, in doing that now. It's just characters are going out of the game. You know, I mean, I remember Michael Johnson, every every transfer window used to come out on the training ground with his phone taped around his head. Gaffer, I'm just waiting for a call. Just like <laughs> as if he was going to get a move. <laughs> you, you, don't, you, don't see any, you don't see anything like that now. You know, it's no. just, we had, we had great dressmen from the time I was there and characters and people that were winners. Yeah. And Definitely. Uh, who, who was your best mate when you were at Blues? Was was there somebody that you know you're sort of thick as thieves, or was it sort of just? Uh, a group I've, I've pretty much gone well with everyone, but I mean, I mean, Percy's a London lad. We used to play snooker quite a bit. Um, don't ever do a double against him because he hates that. He starts throwing things. <laughs> 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 he used to get the right. He snapped his cue one day when we was around there having a game. He just snapped it in half and lost it. Now, the, everyone started looking over us, you know. Right, no, we got to stop now. <laughs> Don't, he didn't like people playing doubles against him. But like Gilly, I got on well. I got on well with all of them, really. Yeah. Had a good relationship with everyone. Yeah. Um, um, Ian also told us about a time when you were asked about uh, what would you have as goal music if you had individual goal music under Trevor Francis, and he said you suggested "Please Release Me." <laughs> Did I? I can't remember that. Yeah. You've got better memory than me. <laughs> Um, oh, it's probably that's probably because uh, there was probably in the time when Trevor kept signing left backs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would make sense. Uh, but no, just you, you you don't hear about them sort of stories nowadays. So no, nah, just... I mean I mean when we met up for um, Jerry Hutchinson for the charity game, as soon as in the dressing room, like we ain't been together for fifteen years. It was just like we was back at training. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. banter was flowing. It's great, and that's what's missing. With yeah. Inside. Well, you've, you've, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, we'll go. I know Harley Dean's been. I mean, I've been critical of him on social media. Be a, be a leader. Be a captain. But he doesn't look like he's got it in him. Whether he's he's taken so much of it, he just. You, you need a Martin O'Connor in there, a Darren Purse. Yeah. You know, that sort of characters. I honestly think it's down to the fact that you know. I think he could easily be a leader at a club like Brentford. Um, mm. where he did well as captain there. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they got playoffs in their first season in the championship, I believe. And, you know, he was he was captain of that. But you, no offence to Brentford, but you compare the size of, yeah. say, the fan base between the two clubs, there's a lot more pressure yeah. um, being a Blues player than there is being a Brentford player because you but, will get uh, more stick. Yeah, but the thing is, though, I don't think... I mean, I see Robbo... He was on a podcast. I don't know if it was your one, guys. He's done both. Forgive me for that. Um, he was saying people don't realise what this club means to people and what it is to play for this football club. 
they don't understand. Yeah. Um, I mean, I lived in Birmingham for eight years and I had some Villa fans that we knew up there that were friends and I used to get stick all the time and they, they don't realise what, as fans and as players, what we've had to endure over the years. Uh, and it, they, they don't realise what it takes to play for this football club. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, to, to be honest, I mean, I, I, it's no secret. I mean, I, I've, I've not been a fan of Harley Dean for a, a for a long time. Um, yeah. Just, just on, on lots of fronts, lots and lots of fronts. Um, but he, you know, he's playing again tonight, um, and you know, there come there does come a point where you know the the managers, you know, he, he's. I mean, he didn't play him against Man City, and I thought that was going to be the start of maybe him taking a rest, but. I said it on the last pod, if he plays from now to the end of the season, we're gone. Because you can't yeah. have somebody in the heart of your defence who's a captain who watches Jack Wiltshire free either with t- 10 yards out and then as soon as he yeah. goes in, he blames everybody around him. That ain't a leader. And, it, and no. it's, it's, it's horrific to see. It's horrific to see it. Going going on, I mean, not just uh, just picking that goal out, your goalkeeper's grab something to blame there as well because he's got to be pulling people and screaming at people yeah. or he's got to be coming and taking yeah. everything out. Yeah. You know, um, but the whole the whole the whole setup is to blame from the manager, from who he's getting recruiting to the board right away through the club. Yeah, he needs some sort of shake up and a change. So j- j- just sort of maybe um, wrapping wrapping it up, Martin. We'd, we'd be sort of mm-hmm. if, given what you've seen this season. If there was sort of one player that you could take out of all the Blues teams that you played for. Uh, all that sort of those eras and, uh, over the over the nine years. If mm. there was one player you could drop into that team that you think would have the the biggest impact and could turn this around for us, who who, who would it be that would turn well have the biggest impact on the team? I would pro- probably pick one of two, and that would be me skipper Martin. Yeah, just for leadership, the dressing room, and I'd stick Percy in there. Yeah, centre half. Um, no nonsense, and I tell you what: if you ain't doing it, you're getting it, and he'll let you know. Yeah, you know. He did, he did um, mention that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it's like you could have your dugaries and your facels, but you need a leader, and yeah, he was an ultimate leader, Darren. Um, along with Skip, but then I'd probably just edge Percy over Skipper. I was going to say he mentioned um, a, a boss stop. Between like him and Dugarry, and you, you know yeah. you were back, backing him on, on that occasion. What what was it, that like? It was it was English versus the French. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, um, they were going at it. Uh, didn't get to each other, but if they did, I think I know I would have backed um, <laughs> the Bethnal Green boy. I think I think he might have. <laughs> I think it, I think he might have eaten him. But um, but to be fair, he didn't he didn't back down, Christoph. Yeah, yeah, he okay, showed right. he showed a bit, he showed that he cared, but I, I understood. What, I, I remember what Percy was saying about he got his contract, and I, I can understand where Darren was coming from because he did change a bit. But yeah, I think he was barking up the wrong tree when he was going for Percy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Once he gets those eyes go, that's it. You got to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> and and just, it, it, I suppose looking looking forward, do you think there's any hope for us staying up? Do you know what? I don't. I don't like people see see people lose their job. But I think if he, how long do you give him? You need to get someone in there just to steady the ship. You don't want to be going down. I, I, like I said to you earlier, someone was saying, "Oh, we'll go down and re- we'll re- rebuild." Sunderland and Bolton thought that would happen. It's if harder to rebuild in. now than it was yeah. like ten years ago. So yeah, I, I think they need someone in there to keep us up and then look at the situation because it looks like it needs a, a big clear out, major overhaul. Yeah. And you don't need the best players. You need a good dressing room, the players to be with the manager and to buy in what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you bring then, in personally? Ambitious. Eddie Howe. Yeah. That's fair. You know? Yeah. You know, if, if the club have got any ambition about them, I would try and get someone like that. Or... People, I'm not a lover of his because I've heard a few comments of his when we used to play against him. But he always gets teams up and around. He's Neil Warnock. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the most it's not the most fashionable football, but he knows it. But saying that, 
just to stabilise and be steady in, in the championship for a few years. Don't like if you get someone in next year and you go up, do you really want to go up straight away? Steady the ship, build slowly and go from there and rather than yeah. just go up, then get relegated. Everyone's got to go again, <laughs> then you go might get relegated again. You don't want this situation. You want to be competing in the top half year in, year out, and then try and build slowly, like we did twenty years ago. Yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. exactly that. So exactly I think people that. would accept that. Yeah. You know, uh, but uh, of course, but then was... you've got to look at. I was, I was speaking to someone other, like on the podcast the other day. You've got to look at the Wolves. How they've done it. They're a fantastic team to watch. Yeah, I know. He, he, yeah, he's, they've spent a lot of money. They've obviously done things right. You know, um, and who doesn't like? Who doesn't want to watch? You can't tell me the Villa fans don't want to play Birmingham in the Premier League, and the Wolves fans don't, the West Brom fans don't. Yeah. You want them derbies. They're the best games in the yeah. world, aren't they? To take the Definitely. piss out of your mate on a Monday morning, you know? 100%. Yeah, that, absolutely. And, 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 the, and the shame, it, it, it just feels... Miles away, doesn't it? It's yeah. miles away at the moment. Yeah. So if you think away, those three clubs, even though West Brom are struggling, those, those three clubs are miles ahead, ahead in all aspects yeah. of Birmingham City at the moment. And that's hard to say, you know? Because we played against yeah. them week in week out, uh, year in year out in the in the championship, but they have they've they've gone to the next yeah. level and stayed there. West Brom might struggle this year, yeah. which they'll probably get relegated. Uh, the, it, the way current things are going, but the other two are just streets ahead. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's a shame. Okay, well, um, yeah. it is, it is, but. You know, the one thing is for certain, you know, nothing is forever. And if we've got to take a step forward to go, to step backwards to go forward, then then it might be the best thing yeah. for us. But, Definitely. you know, we, it all starts off. I mean, this will be very much, uh, I guess, go, goes after the game that we've got coming up this evening. And if we can get a win against Millwall, then who knows? It could kickstart something. And, you know, we, we've you, got... You're probably fine. We spoke all about this. We're going to win 5-0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, mate, I... I, I, I'd gladly yeah. take that. Well, I'd gladly point, take yeah. it. Point away, free at home. You, you got yeah. to improve your home form, haven't you? Definitely. Uh, I was, yeah. Was I looking well, at was, was it? Yeah, five yeah. out of twenty-four points or something like we're taking oh, in it. Last that at Saint Andrews is probably just. Worse than that. Yeah, it's, probably it's, worse than that. It's not right. Was it two draws? Was it Wickham, Coventry, and beat Blackburn away? That's it, isn't it? Well, I yeah, think. those those are the recent. Uh, we didn't beat Blackburn. Lost to Blackburn. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it, Middlesbrough. Yeah. Middlesbrough, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's not good enough. Any other, any other club, he'd be gone. No. Yeah. I, no, without a doubt. With the amount of without money he's probably I mean, on, the, to be in twenty third isn't on. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing is, though, is he got um because normally when you get foreign coaches, they bring all their staff with them. Has he got all that? Yeah. With them? Yeah, his brother's there. There's 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 loads there. Uh, there's loads there's an there. agent somewhere that's coined it right, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And uh, but we we but we can't afford to put the stand together. Which uh, I mean, that'll be <laughs> <laughs> only lad of our own that's in the setup is Craig Gardner. That's that's it. That's all we've got. Other than the academy yeah. setup, that's all we've got. Yeah, but it, it, it was, it was, it was yeah. head of rec- who's recruiting? Someone saying they've got someone in Spain somewhere else. You just yeah, need they someone. Yeah, they them all, and uh, you know we're we're using agencies in France and Spain. Time and fortunes. Find our play exactly, and it's not on because I mean I've 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 listened to previous managers like Steve McLaren who said that the scouting department is the most important department at a football club. You know, he's got he used to have his own war room at Derby and FC Twenty, mm. um, where he just get all the scouts in and they chat and plan, and he he knew what he was doing. And Chris Hutton was the same at Brighton. He said scouts were the most important part of the club. So, but as as long as he's having his input into them and telling them this is what I want, this is what I need in my team, not someone going, oh, I've got this guy, he's 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 played fifteen times in Serie B, he scored twenty goals, which the league's crap, and he comes over and he's useless. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Martin, thank you very much for your time. That's no been you know, absolutely fantastic to get an insight into what was just a, an unbelievable career for Blues. And uh, yeah, certainly from a fan's point of view, um, 
yeah, my, my God, we could do with a Martin Granger right now, but uh, <laughs> we'll have to try and we'll have to try and muddle on through with what we've got. But yeah, as I said, many thanks for your time. Drive no your problem, train Dan. down and get your boots on. <laughs> I think I might ache in the morning if I break. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just quickly before we wrap up, um, yeah. you, we saw that you had a brief spell in in you know as a manager. Um, yeah. what, Four days. What happened there? <laughs> well. What it was, it was my it was a local team, Chesham. Yeah. Uh, my lad, my lad used to play for I think he was the under thirteens at the time, and um, I just agreed to take the job on a Tuesday. We had a game on the Saturday. On the following Tuesday, my son Charlie got offered uh, schoolboy terms, two year schoolboy terms at Norwich, which was a six hour round driving trip from where we live. <laughs> so I had to take him. I had to take him there Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Wow. So I'd, so I'd soon pick him up from school, drive him straight there, bring him straight back, straight to bed. So I couldn't, after the first game, I said, look, I can't expect my wife to do three hours there, three hours back, four times a week. Yeah. You know, so I just said, look, I'm gonna, you're going to have to say it's for family reasons. And uh, I lasted one game. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, was, what was the experience like? Did you enjoy it or uh, no? Um, <laughs> They they were they were bottom of the league and to be honest they were useless and <laughs> no. they had, they had really bad players so it was one of them you weren't you you just going to have to really mix some people from here there and everywhere but I, I would I would have enjoyed it but it just it just didn't materialise and then once he he got that and then he said to me after the I think it was about a year and a half he said that I can't do it no more I can't be getting home at midnight and going to school. Um, I knew Kevin Dearden, who was yeah. a loanee uh, um Birmingham. He was a good friend of mine from Brentford. Uh, yeah, from Brentford. He was a goalkeeping coach at Orient. Said, bring him down, we'll have a look. And the first session, he said, yeah, we'll sign him. Wow. And Brilliant. that was it. So then it was only 20 minutes up the road, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> Big upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, that, was my, that was my four days in management. Wow. Fair enough. Well, I'd, I'd probably give you four now, to be honest, uh, after tonight. <laughs> See how well, you go. <laughs> let's, hopefully, let's hopefully I can get a result. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, that's it, guys. Thank you. Thank you for downloading this pod. Uh, and as I said, if you're watching on YouTube, then then please subscribe. There's, there's lots dropping. There's lots going on at St Andrews at the moment. Uh, and yeah, we've got a few tough games ahead, but ones that I think are more than winnable but we just need to get that form turned around a little bit. But, uh, but for now, thanks very much and keep right on.